Joanne, we travelled up from Newry a few miles to Narrowater Castle and we're in the courtyard here. And what do you think of this beautiful scene? It's absolutely gorgeous, actually. But when I came off the driveway, I thought we were going to be standing at the front of the castle. You've picked sort of not the most obvious oh, spot. Yeah, it's a lovely <laughs> place now. And it was built in the 1700s and the character about this whole place is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all the old stonework and, you know, the castle in its original form. I must say, it's a wonderful place just to come and walk around, yeah, never mind super. paint. It is indeed. It's actually a wee spot I would like to live in. Yeah. <laughs> but just look at the scene there, Joanne. Do you think you're going to be able to handle that okay? Mm, shouldn't be too bad. The, the brickwork looks quite difficult, the stones, because yeah. there's so many different colours yeah. in it. Well, there's a good few techniques that I'll be showing you just to make those simple. And mm -hmm. it is going to be quite a simple scene with the techniques that we're using. But look at the way you have the stonework there and the dark joins between the stones. You get that lovely difference in light and dark mm -hmm. and along the window there you have some paint there's white paint on the stonework and we're going to be working around that white so that we retain the white of the paper right. and the window itself is lovely and dark isn't it you know yes, against the white indeed. and the red flower i'm going to show you how to paint this okay. red flower through the glass <laughs> but now what we have to do is start to get a wash down on this mm -hmm. and you can see that the window already is sitting out against the stonework and what we want to do now is paint around the window and retain that white Nice. We're going to also have to leave the white of the door because if we put on a yellowish stone colour yes. and then put blue over the top of it, we'll finish up with a green door. Yeah, uh, green colour, right. right. So I want you to take the three quarter inch flat brush and start at the top and just wash on a nice light underlying stone colour. So yeah. I'll hand over to you and just oh, bring yeah. that right down, <laughs> paint the whole thing working around the doors and the window. Right, so, so it's my turn now. Yeah. Get the brush in hand. That's right. So you start at the top. Yeah. And the more lightly that you would lean on the paper, the more the paper will come out of the, the hairs of the brush as well. No more water now. Yeah, just come back into the paint. That's it. Take a lot, put the brush in and come straight out. Really? With yeah. that much? Yeah. Oh, it sort of retains it actually, doesn't it? It does. You have a sable uh, mixture in the brush. The, the brush hairs are made out of sable and synthetic. And the sable gives great water retention quality, so it's mm -hmm. going to hold bags and bags of water. I used to tell you things like this, didn't I, Dermot, when I worked in, <laughs> in the art shop? Well, that, that was strange, you know, that you were working in the art shop when I was buying brushes a number of years ago. It was unbelievable. Now, what I'm going to do there, you see those white stones down the side of the door? Yes. You I went over, over them. That there. So what I'm going to do is just take a tissue and dab that and oh, see if you can get the white oh, back. Oh, great. This is easy as that, then. Yeah. And that one there, that's, that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a white one there as well, so we'll just block that one out. Right. Well that's the initial underlying wash on and you can see that that's very important because it gives us the underlying colour. So how did you find that Joanne? It wasn't too bad. Um, with that brush as well you cover a lot of the area in quite a short time. Yeah, well that's the whole secret, to get it on as quickly as possible. Now we're moving on to the brickwork above the window itself and you can see that lovely red rustic brick colour. Mm -hmm. And we'll put that on with the number 5 brush and that's a mixture of light red with a wee bit of crimson. And you just block those in and leave the light spaces between them. But you can see there's a lot of texture on the brickwork, so we're gonna leave little areas like that untouched with the paint. So off you go. Right. Now you need to have quite a steady hand there as well. It would have been a lot easier now if it wasn't sort of um, so much like worn away part. That, that's right. <laughs> well, I think it adds character to it, you see, and you get that lovely light on the top of the surface of the brick but leave the spaces in between because those are very important. Right. You can see that the spaces between the bricks are lighter. Would you have painted in that style, you know, whenever you were doing watercolours? No, not at all, Dermot. I wouldn't have done a wash. I would have uh, worked with the solid tube straight onto the, the, the picture, onto the sketch. So right. it's, it's quite different yeah. for me. Well, the whole beauty about watercolour is the transparency of the medium. And you get that lovely sharpness and crispness in the painting whenever you you have your paint thinned down so that you're getting an influence from the underlying wash and paper shining through the colour. Mm -hmm. Just continue on with that. I'm quite slow, I'm sure you're no. a lot quicker. <laughs> no, you're better to take your time, you know, and get those outlines. Well, that's all the brickwork in, Joanne. And you can see there that by leaving some of the white spots in the bricks, you can get that rustic effect. Mm -hmm. And then what we did, we just put a little bit of light red and ultramarine in there to give those darker shades to the brick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You liked doing that, did you? Yeah, that was good. That's good. Now we're going to move on to, to the stonework and we'll concentrate first of all on this big stone here at the top of the door and window and we'll do a few of these little ones as well. 
So what we have there is a mixture of raw sienna with light red and a bit of ultramarine. And what I want you to do is take that and brush in all of that stone, but leave a little space down that side. Right. And you just mop it all in, you know, one stroke over the top. And, and you, you, you told me before to go in one direction, isn't that right? That's right, yeah. That's right. But whenever you're doing a stone, you see it's not, it hasn't got a general direction in the green, so you can go really anywhere there. Fill in that little white bit. Just now, when you have that on, this is a darker mixture of ultramarine and light red. And you see where that's wet? If I touch that, you see what happens? Sort of bleeds, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. And it explodes up into it. Do you this next one now? The beauty about watercolour. That's it. It's all about bleeding the colours in. That's the only way you're going to get texture. Mm -hmm. But I need now to, to go again no, it's with okay. that. Yeah. If you leave a few little white flecks, it doesn't matter because you can see that there are light flashes in the stone as well. And there's another bit. Try that. See yeah. what see what you think of it. Down here at the bottom. Yeah, the mostly along the bottom because that's where you're going to have most of the darkness. That's it. Ah. And you see how it runs into it. Yeah, indeed. And it gives you that real textured effect. Now you see the way those stones are darker. It's a darker type of, of granite. And if I give you a darker mix, mm -hmm. ultramarine and light red in a thicker mix this time, feed that in to see how much of a difference that makes on the bottom side. Down here. That's it. And do you always just work sort of like this, Derm, as you're working three stones at a time and, until you... Yeah, because if you don't do that, the first one will be dry and then right. it'll not take the initial wash in. Now, although we haven't sketched in a few stones there, I'm going to put another one there just by laying the brush down like that. Now you can feed into that yeah, as well. Yeah, that looks great as well, doesn't it? The just thicken that up. I'll give you a bit of a thicker mix there to give you a real black granite. So it's, isn't it true that you don't use black? That's right. I you never use black never or use white. Black. That's, it. That's it. Isn't that lovely colour now? That's, yeah, it's gorgeous indeed. And one of the secrets as well is don't have the stones the same shape or size. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at that wall there, there's no way that you have two stones exactly the same. That's right. There's no. It's not geometric at all. That's all the stonework finished, and you can see now that that has given you a good build-up of colour. Yes, it's lovely the way this, the light area is still coming through, that yeah. sort of builds on it, doesn't it? That's very important. And how did you find that? You know, did you enjoy doing that? But yes, it's, it's fantastic the way it's made me use different colours and helped me along with that to, to really give that depth. Well, what we can do is move along now, and while you're waiting on that to dry, we'll put in the glass panes in the window. So I'll hand over the number five brush to you, and if you just cut around the white window frame. You'll see how it makes the white stand out against the dark glass. Nice and neat, nice and neatly down along the curtain. That's it. And block that in. Lovely. Now cut around the flower. That's going to be a red flower so you need to cut around that to make right. it look as if it's behind the frame. This is completely different to the way I've painted before. You know I wouldn't be so neat first <laughs> <laughs> now, can you see how the darkness of the pane really does stand out against the frame? But we can't do the curtains yet because this is still damp. But yes. what we can do is put those beautiful shadows on. It's going to give a 3D effect to the window. Right. So, if we start along there, you're going to have a shadow underneath the, the brickwork. Now, that looks very dark at the minute, but that'll dry out quite a lot lighter. Now, you're better positioned to do that yes. than I am. So, bring that right across in one stroke, just one stroke nice and slowly and then thicken it out so that it's all the same with the whole way across. That'll do. And now dip into this shadow colour again. Are you worried I'd go on there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and come down to the inside of the wall there. Down here? Yeah. So this is just, again, ultramarine? It's ultramarine with a little bit of light red in it, just to give you that shadow colour. I'm taking note of all these colours now, do you realise that? <laughs> I must say, you know the colours very well, but then I suppose the fact that you worked in, a, in an art shop, it, it would help. The left hand side of all the rails on the window now as well. Right. That's it, yes. And the one below. Down here. Yeah. Well, I must say, Joanne, that really does look well. And you can see how the shadows that you've put on the underside of the window frames really does make the window stand out. And you know now that the window is recessed into the wall. Mm -hmm. And I've carried this through then again to the door. Yeah. And using the same technique, 
you've shown that the panels in the door are recessed into the door. Yeah. So now that that's dry, we can go ahead and put on the door colour. And I've mixed up, um, it's ultramarine with cerulean blue, and that should give us that door colour. That's it. And if you work along on top of the shadows that you put on, just thin that down slightly. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you can work over that there without, it's not going to affect it then? No, whenever that's dry, the, the underlying wash will shine through the wash that you're putting on right. to show that that is a shadow on the panels. Just very neatly and keep the white frame. You're very conscious of going over the line, isn't it? You yeah. do. And uh, once you're working around the edges, you have to be careful. But whenever you're filling in the body of the door, you know, the, the broad area of the door, you can work quite quickly. I'll just load the brush for you again, Joanne. You do have to work quite quick, Dermot, don't you? You do, because the, the wash is drying all the time. Right. That's it. a shadow on this wall because you can see at the present time it looks very flat but I think that a shadow thrown across that window by the wall would give a very dramatic effect. Yes. So let me have that brush. Mm -hmm. Now with the three quarter inch flat and a mixture of cerulean blue, ultramarine and some crimson mm -hmm. we're just going to start at that point and you come right down across the window onto the ground. Now that's the shadow is going to be thrown down at an angle. Mm -hmm. It comes onto the ground and follows the line of the wall towards us. Now, this is where you have to be really quick, and I want you to block in that whole area, not rubbing very hard on the stonework, yeah. otherwise, here you go. That looks drastic now. It does, yeah. <laughs> Over the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the, the strokes downward while you're on the stone. Right, I see, yes. Yeah. Yes, go back into the paint again so that you're not rubbing too hard on it. Keep them downward till you come to the ground, and then and bring then them across. This way, exactly, yeah, in the flat motion across. That's it. Keep going into the paint. Back into the paint again. I'm going to get some water into that. Yeah. You see, the reason you have to be quick is you're going to get a hard line if you don't work quickly along that. Yes. Uh -huh. But you're going very well there. And pull that across right to the wall, dipping in again. I'll mix up more paint for you whenever you're doing that. Oops. More crimson. Yeah, that's great. What about do I Yeah, we're going to do that there now in a downward stroke as well. It's, a, it's funny you say that about transpar transparency, Transpar yes, because it's sort of coming through. It does, yeah. The underlying wash should shine through, and then you can thicken up some of the effects on the wall. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, that, that wash on now, and you can see how dramatic that is. It gives you the shadow effect mm -hmm. on the wall. But just with the tissue now, what I want to do is take some of that colour back off again. And that's where the foliage is going to go, on that little pot and the window box. And we still have this red flower to put yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> my special red flower. So when that's dry, we'll start and put some figuring on the stones here. You see the dark lines between the stones? Yes, uh-huh. And a few wee bits of finishing details on the ground. Fantastic. And whenever we've that done, all you have to do is sign it to her. Oh, <laughs> well now it's fantastic and I can't believe that that's my first watercolour and it's just worked out so well, it's like fabulous. Well, you make it on with it. Thank you. <laughs> Joanne is certainly happy with her first painting in watercolours. 
So join me again next time for more painting around the moors. <laughs>